right, welcome back to Split Decision. This week on episode 42, we're going to be talking UFC Vegas 91, Nicolau versus Perez. After that, we're going to talk top five, our top five draft this week. We're going with top five draft busts. It's going to be exciting. That's in honor of the uh, NFL draft going on right now, Thursday. Shout out Drake May 3rd overall. Oh, uh, just released? Sweet. And then from there, we're going to um, finish everything up with stakes and takes. Give you a recap of last week's bets, takes and stakes, and stakes and takes. Check out splitdecisionpod.com where you're going to find out all of our episodes, graphics, top five, previous things, everything. All right, let's go. All right, so the UFC returns after taking a much-needed break after the best card ever in UFC 300, and we return in proper UFC fashion to the Apex for a fight night. And it's a well-deserved coming back to the Apex. Give everybody a breather with a normal normal fight night. Got to ease back into it before the next pay-per-view. Yeah, like we say, violence is forever, and fight nights are forever. So it's a six-fight uh, six fight. Uh, main card uh, and the first fight is going to be the American Tim Means the Dirty Bird taking on uh, Euros Medich the doctor we've seen Medich fight before I'm pretty sure we've covered Tim Means before uh, Tim Means comes in with a record of 33 wins 15 losses one draw one no contest a staggering 15 wins 12 losses one no contest in the UFC so he's been in there a while up and down taking on Medich who's coming off of a loss uh, he's 3-2 and two in the UFC 9-2 and two overall He's never been to the scorecard, uh, Medich, the doctor. You're right. I actually thought uh, Medich was going to win against the um, Orobai. His in his UFC debut, he impressed. He Orobai kind of dominated Medich. Yeah, he threw him on the ground. He just he went with a relentless takedown approach and just uh, sub take subbed him with a face crank. One interesting thing, Medich, three and two in the UFC, as I said, he only has two career losses. Both of those are by submission. His three UFC wins. All by knockout. Yeah. So he seems to he has a game plan that he follows. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't try to stray from it when he knows, you know, what's going on. He or not what's going on. When his game plans work and he sticks to it. If it doesn't, he tries to adapt. More often than not, we've seen that happening with his, you know, nine and two overall record. Tim Means, his last win or his last fight was a win. Coming off of a win. Uh for that three losses though. Three losses. In now a row. that win was really to retain a spot on the UFC roster. Uh, Andre Fialho, who he beat in the third round by KO, he was released the following month. So it's yeah, really it's, you rarely see guys unless they're superstars, say like Tony, Tony Ferguson, Ferguson, lose right. like four in a row and still be in the UFC. So it was a career saving win for him in his last last time out. Right. So Tim Means, he's a striking first fighter. He and can work on the ground when he needs to. We're kind of burying the lead here. He's 40 years old, and he's fighting a 30-year-old. So there's a big age difference in this. Yeah, and I think the stat is like 67 or 68% of the time, the younger fighter wins when there's a large age difference. In 10 years, you would say it's pretty large. Yeah. Um, I think Medich here, Medich here uh, is going to mix it up when he has to. But I think he's going to overall just you know take advantage of the opportunities he finds in the fight. I think when... Means makes a mistake. I think Medich is going to just jump all over it, and I think that's how we see the fight going. Yeah, I'm going to go with the younger guy, the doctor, uh, Medich, for the win as well. Would you say that Medich is going to see a patient on Saturday? He's not going to help a patient. Oh, so he didn't take the Hippocratic Oath? That's the one where you say you can't like let like, people have die. To help or, them. Yeah, yeah, right. He's the opposite. He's going to tell everything. He's going to break HIPAA laws. There you go. On Saturday. There you go. Let's get mean. All right, Jonathan, JS, JSP, not GSP, JSP Pierce. I hate it. This is a side note. I hate it when they try to play off the GSP name because he's not the only one that does it. There's a couple others. But J, come on, JSP. Be creative. Featherweight fighters taking on David, the silent assassin, Onama. Uh, Jonathan Pierce is 14 and 5. He has nine KOs, two subs, three decisions. Five and two in the UFC. He's, you know, he's pretty good. He ended his five fight win streak with his only, I'm sorry, with his only sub loss to Yo Anderson Brito. Um, yeah, so his two UFCs, five and two, as I said, in the UFC, 
Our only sub loss in the UFC, lost I should say. The first, his first UFC fight by knockout, won right. five in a row, and then lost his last fight by sub. So Nama is three and two in the UFC. He has a KO win over Gabriel Santos most recently, which I think that plays to Onama's fighting style. While he, you know, can sub people, he likes to, you know, he, he likes to throw hands. Never been finished in thirteen career fights. He's only had two out of the scorecard. Yeah, I think he's and they impressive. Both losses. I think it's an impressive underdog. When you have somebody like David Onama coming off of a win, um, I think it, I think it's going to be a highlight here for David Onama. Pierce is three and two is the favorite, and this is a pretty close. You know, it's minus one seventy to plus one forty. Onama's one and one as the underdog. He's only you know, like we said, three and two in the UFC. I think David Onama is going to win, and I think the hands are going to be shown here. And if it can't be shown as clean as Onama wants, I think he's just going to take him down and choke him out. Well, I originally had Pierce, but you kind of you kind of talked me into Onama. I'm going to go David Barack Onama as well for the win, the Silent Assassin. Ooh, I like that one. I so wish, let's move on. I next wish I one. I thought of it. Damn it! This next one, uh, you might want to watch from the beginning because I don't think it's going to last very long. Yeah, Austin it could be Lane, seconds. the six six American fighter, comes in. 0-1-1 oh, one one in the UFC. Both of his fights are against Junior Taffa, correct? Yes. Poked yes. him in the eye the first time, no contest. Second time, got knocked out by Junior Taffa. Which I think, honestly, the first fight was going to go that way. I mean— We talked about that Austin Lane's the, the kind fights. of guy where it's—and Junior Taffa, honestly. It's going to go one of the two ways. Right. Either he's getting knocked out or he's knocking you out. And he's taking on an undefeated Brazilian fighter, making his UFC debut. Uh, help me with this name. Jo- Jonata Denise. Jonata Denise. As I said, UFC debut. He's six and zero. All six wins by knockout. All of them first round knockouts. Yeah, I mean, the only thing we've really former seen. former professional kickboxer too. I mean, he is. You watch his tape and you see some of his highlights. He's an impressive guy. Very impressive. And the only thing we've you know seen as far as like close to UFC is his one fight in the Contender Series. Which kind of earned first round him, knockout earned his contract, uh, like you said, first round knockout comes in with a lot of power and little desire to wrestle. You know he wants to put his hands on you and beat you to death. Um, maybe with Denise. Um, See what she did there. Yeah, with a combined twenty two total fights and no decisions between the two of them, I would bet a finish for this. Yeah, fight. not only no decisions. Only one of them hasn't ended in a knockout, and it was a actually a submission win by Austin Lane before the UFC. Um, that makes me lean on the uh, the favorite, the minus two seventy five favorite here. I got to pick with the fans, Vegas, and the hands. Jonathan Denise. I'm gonna agree with you. I'm picking Denise. I'm gonna go with a guy that I haven't seen got knocked out before, and that's six and zero. Austin Lane. Uh, that's a good way. To I put mean, it. in his two fights, we saw him poke an eye egregious eye poke yeah that was a pretty bad eye and then get knocked out uh i'm gonna go with the brazilian in his ufc debut to get the win stay undefeated keep his first round knockout streak going too right absolutely all right let's go on to the next fight women's flyweight division 125 pounds ariane the queen of violence lipsky this is a civil war here two brazilians 17 and 8 for her she's six ko's four subs seven decisions Four losses by KO and four losses by decision. Six and five in the UFC, though. She's kind of been up and down UFC-wise. Yeah, it's kind of uh, not a win-loss like streak. But on but a three-fight win streak, so there you go. Uh, Kareen Killer Silva, 17-4 in her career. Nine KOs, eight submissions. Never won by decision. Point that out. Three and zero oh in the UFC. All of them by submission. Right, So, but I got to point out her losses. One KO loss, two sub losses, and one decision. So she's a wrestler favorite, but she's also been caught a couple times. Like you said, never in the UFC. And Lipsky's, I mean, she has a little bit of a wrestling. I mean, she can sub people. Right. She's a uh, purple belt in Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So Both of them are coming off of impressive wins, as we said. And Both Silva's them... on an eight-fight win streak. That's noted as well. That means you you got a lot of confidence coming into this fight. You're riding high. You've been riding high for a while. She gets finishes. I mean, all, she does. as we said, 17 and 4, all of them finishes. All of her wins are finishes. So and she's 3 very and 0 impressive. in the UFC, all subs. So she's doing kind of what she wants to do. She hunts submissions. Obviously, she lands them being 3 and 0 in the UFC. Now, Lipsky's never been finished by sub. 
So I think it's going to be a very interesting fight. I think it's going to be a good back and forth fight. The odds are close. I lean Ariane Lipsky because she's won seven matches for on decision. Showing that she throws hands, she keeps it competitive. She's good on the ground, a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like I said. With her six KOs, it shows she has power. And she's also been in the UFC for a while longer. Kind of everything going for that. I think the underdog on this one's going to take it. I Arianne disagree with Lipsky. you. I'm taking the undefeated UFC fighter, 3-0 in the UFC, as we said. I think she's well-rounded. She can knock her out. She can sub her. Lipsky, as you said, hasn't lost by sub, but that's okay because Silva can come in and knock her out. She's a girl, and it's not... You don't Careful. S- you don't see it a lot in women's MMA. She consistently finishes people. She Damn. does not go to scorecard. This dude just hung the shovel back up. As soon as he took it out, he just doop, put it back where it belonged. And Good I think job. she continues that. I think her name, her nickname is Appropriate Killer. I think she quote-unquote kills Lipsky. I got Silva. By finish, I'm kind of leaning knockout. Kinda, I like it. I think she gets her first UFC knockout. This I do think this is going to be a close fight. out. It's not definitely, in my opinion, not going to be a ragdoll type of affair. Um, but I like that we differ on something. I uh, I hate it when... I don't hate it, but I, di- I dislike it when you switch to the pick I had because then it's... I usually win that pick. And I need you to lose sometimes if I'm going to you know get the ground back on you. But anyway, let's go to the light heavyweight division. Ryan, Superman Span. I don't know how Ryan Span's only 32 years old. I feel like he's been in the UFC forever. Yeah. I don't know. That is a good question. I guess his date of birth adds up to him being 32. I mean, he's 20. Yeah, probably. I haven't looked at his birth certificate, though, so I don't know. Right. He's taken on Bogdan Guskov, otherwise known as the Uzbek, the Uzbek Anthony Smith. Yeah, one and one in the UFC for Guskov. Uh, Superman Spawn, as I said, he's been in the UFC for a little while, seven and four. Two he's and three in his last five. And two he, straight losses. Coming yeah, in. not looking the best for Four him. and four in his last eight. So he started 3-0 you know, in the UFC, and then he's kind of been up and down since then. Coming off of a rematch loss against Anthony Smith. As you said, Guskov's kind of the Uzbeki Anthony Smith. Ryan Spawn seems to have a thing where he can't beat Anthony Smith. He's lost to him twice now. Right. Uh, Guskov... 15 and 3 with 13 KOs. So he's a guy. He has crazy power. He likes to finish guys. Never been to the scorecard and won. He's only been to the scorecard once. He and lost. lost that fight. Right. He's, he's a guy. He's only lost three times, and he's lost once by KO, once by sub, once by decision. So that's kind of impressive in its own right. Yeah, and as I said, one and one in the UFC. His one win is a KO. His one loss is a sub. So he's. Kinda. He's a guy. He's seem, he's kind of wild. Yeah, he's, I'm, he's a wild boy. It's it's nerve wracking to watch him come out and fight because he's shown that he can do literally everything. He can win he either can, way, he, except by decision, and he can uh, quote unquote die anyway. Right. Musing die a lot today. I don't know why, but hey, it's all good. It's a violence. It's a violent sport. People get it. Uh, Guskov, like you said, never won by decision, but he has 15 finishes. I got to go with Bogdan Guskov to win. I think. He's going to take down Ryan Superman Spawn. I think Spawn's time in the UFC, especially with his recent time not being the greatest for his own achievements, I think Guskov is going to take advantage of that kind of film, take advantage on, of Spawn while he's on the dumps, and be the Superman's kryptonite. I think Guskov is going to play off of Ryan Spawn's inability to beat Anthony Smith. Oof. And he's going to say, I look just like Anthony Smith. Except if I'm Uzbeki, so I'm probably tougher. And, I, and got, if I, I will say, the last time he fought Anthony Smith, he did wobble him. He did wobble him, but he still lost. Right. It was a split decision, but I got Guskov winning the fight, though. Good. We agree on that as well. All right, main event. Matthews Nicolau versus Alex Perez. Nicolau, 19 wins, three losses, one draw. He's 7-2 and two in the UFC one interesting thing to note, he only has two finishes out of the seven wins, and both of his losses are by KO. Yep. And Last take- loss was to Roy Val when he was on his uh, his kind of title run trajectory. He went next fight, lost to Pantoja, and then won against Moreno. Um, so, you know, Roy, was, Roy Val kind of proved it's a worthy it's guy a to get loss, knocked, yeah. off, knocked out too. And he's taking on Perez, uh, 24 wins, eight losses. He's six and four in the UFC, so he's kind of been up and down. He has three L's in a row, but you look at the guys he's lost to. It's uh, Makayev. Right. It's Pantoja. Now, Makayev was by decision. 
That's that was his last that fight. Shows that, that was in your uh, chin's March, not completely gone. Wasn't that long ago? Right. Then it was Pintoja. Then it was the Figueredo. So those are all legitimate losses. Uh, Makayev is a undefeated prospect who a lot of people think is a future title contender. And, and the other I two agree. are literally champs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, that, that's definitely things to point out. And Alex Perez is never a quitter. He's only been finished six times. Look at all the times he's fought. He's fought 32 total times in his career. But one interesting thing is his last win was all the way back in 2020. So it's been four right. years almost since his last win, which is... Yeah, before he hasn't his fought loss, a lot, but still. That's, right. So before his loss to Mokaev, he hadn't fought since July of 22. And then prior to... Like, he has had kind of layoffs in between. I get it. Which but is he why he's recently, making the quick turnaround and... He fought in March of this year. He's right. fighting again. I was going to say he was recently active, so that's good to see. He is still, like, motivated by it. Uh, Nikolau is 1-0 and against shorter reach, and he wins 67% of the time as the favorite, which he is in this fight. And he, you, we mentioned his last loss. Before that loss to Roy Val, Nikolau, six straight wins. So he was a guy. He was building momentum. He was yeah. moving his way to the top of the division. I still think he's one of the top fighters in the division. Yeah, I don't think... Like kind of that's why I mentioned the Roy Val loss is because I don't think we can just take it away from his, him as a fighter. I you think have a six a, fight win streak and you get knocked out in the first round. It's kind of like that's I don't even want to say bad luck because it wasn't luck by Roy Val, but it's like yeah, but it's the a tough UFC. Night. That's what I expect to happen. Yeah, Everybody you're at the top falls. of the division of UFC. Like that's just a tough fight. Right, exactly. So I I think um, Matthews Nicolau is going to win. I think it's going to be a tough fight for Alex Perez, but. The guy's resilient, and he's not going to quit. So he, I mean, that's why the odds are so close for all these fights for Saturday, is I think Nikolau is going to win, but Perez could easily come in there and win. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I'm picking Nikolau, and I'm kind of leaning towards this is going to be a decision fight. It's going to go to the scorecards. All right, in honor of the... 2024 NFL draft that we mentioned earlier is currently going on. Our top five this week is going to be top five draft bust. Yes, sir. So a bust is... Oh, that's a good thing. What is a bust? It's a high pick that has a lot of expectation that does not pan out, I believe. Now, there are various degrees of bust. Okay. And a lot of the busts are determined just because there was such high expectations on a guy and it turned out just to have an average career. They don't have to have a horrible career. I feel like but some set- of them have horrible careers. I was I was gonna say I feel like you're setting yourself up for your own your own draft board over here. Maybe so. Maybe I'm just doing some smoke screens. I don't know. But regardless, you get the first pick. So all right, Alex, what's your top five draft bust? So I'm excited about this one because I did a lot of research. I had a lot of fun looking at it. I even wrote down some things that I normally just try to do off of memory, but they're written this time. Don't look at my stuff. Look away, you zoom in lens boy. All right, first pick, Ryan Leaf. Second overall pick in the 1998 draft. Quarterback, obviously. The dude is 1 million percent hateable. He is uh, not a friendly guy on the internet. He's been to prison. Been to prison. Oh, we're talking all the... Th- okay, cool. Yeah, he's definitely been to prison. Well, I think the biggest thing that makes him a bust, He was too, a, dr- a dr- drug problem. Well, I think the biggest thing is... It was like year, 1A, he played 10 1B games. to Peyton Manning, who so, ended up having one of the best careers ever. Right, well, that that's part of the things I wrote down. So his rookie year, he played t- 10 games, threw two touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Like, nowadays, you that alone, you would never get in the NFL again. Right. Only had a 25-game career. Drafted... He was the second overall. It was Chargers. Peyton Manning yeah. and then him. And the Colts almost drafted him. Man, imagine what that would have done. I'm a Colts fan. Imagine that what that would have done. So, yeah, I got Ryan Leaf, number one overall. That's, for I think, for obvious reasons. And I think probably the 1-1 one, one for both of us are going to be kind of for obvious reasons. Or at least I would yeah, hope. Yeah, that's a good pick. And I think that's it had to be one of our first picks almost. My I was first- advised heavily to pick Ryan Leaf. Has my first one pick one. is actually going to be my guest pick from my beautiful girlfriend, Clara. Nice. Shout out, Clara. I gave her the task of finding me. Uh, she's not a big NFL historian, so she did a little research to find the biggest draft bust she could think of. She's and she, not? 
And she gave me a pick that is so good I had to pick it first. It probably would have been my first pick anyway. Okay. It's also one that is close to home because he went to my favorite school, my the team I'm the biggest fan of. That's the LSU Tigers. Okay. The 2007 first overall pick, quarterback Jamarcus Russell. He's definitely on my list. I mean, he's a guy, he had all the talent in the world, probably the best arm I've ever seen, but came to the NFL, didn't care, gained a whole bunch of weight, codeine, wasn't watching film. He was the... Uh, I don't have the stats in front of me, but he didn't last that much longer than Ryan Leaf in terms of how many games He had a 25-game career as yeah. well. Yeah, it was about the same. He probably had a little bit better stats than two touchdowns, 15 interceptions, but the wins were probably the same. His rookie year, he had decent stats, but it, that's why I didn't write him down because I didn't want to give the guy any much credit. Um, but he was he was the guy with the infamous uh, DVD story, right? Where they it was they, him and they have another guy, but yeah, it was like they gave him a blank disc and like watch film, and they came back and he was like, yeah, it was a good film. Yeah, I learned a lot, and it was like, <laughs> bro, it's there's nothing on it. But, I mean, he's such a big bust because he had a good college career and he just had so much talent where it was like, man, if this guy just applied himself halfway, he could have been one of the best quarterbacks. Maybe not of all time, but, like, in the league at the time, he could have been one of the best quarterbacks. And he turned out to be just such a bust. And it was yeah. disappointing. Lazy, for sure. So, Jamarcus Russell, uh, my guest pick from Clara. That's a solid one. pick. That's a solid, solid pick. My number two. This is the guy... He's a bust. A lot of people probably called that he was going to be a bust, but he had so much hype and he had so much fanfare in college. Heisman Trophy winner. My number two is going to be Johnny Manziel. Okay, I got him um, on the list. He was 22nd overall, which is probably the lowest pick uh, out of the ones we're going to talk about. But in 2014, he had so much hype. There were a lot of people that didn't think he was going to be good, but there were equally as many people that were like, he could be generational. In college, he was just electric. Won the Heisman. I mean, he could do whatever he wanted on the football field. And to be honest, there was like one or two games in his NFL career where it was like, oh. Where he showed flashes where it was like, oh, shit. Yeah, maybe if he's laid off the booger sugar. But he had the same problem as the two guys we mentioned where he didn't take it serious. Yep. Um, Came in unprepared. Unprepared. Didn't didn't fulfill his duties. I mean, he was a freshman Heisman Trophy winner. For, first ever freshman Heisman Trophy winner. And he, he goes and just bumps it. He was it. electric. And yeah, he had, and he was a guy. If he would have just applied himself, I'm that not saying he would have been on the graphic. If he would have just applied himself, he, I'm not saying he would have been like the best quarterback ever. But he could have been a superstar in the NFL. He really could. He had a 42, especially how much fanfare and how much people liked him. That's a crazy, crazy one. His rookie, his rookie quarterback rating in the NFL was 42. Yeah, so Johnny Manziel, I was a big fan of him, too, coming out, and it was just so disappointing. Money Manziel, that was his, Money Manziel. That was his thing, right? Yeah. Drake made a song about him. R.I.P. his career. So Johnny Manziel, number two overall. That's a solid, solid pick. I and like My it. number two, not two overall. Right. No, I, 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 three overall. Three overall. What's your second pick, Alex? My second pick, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Brian Bosworth. That's, that's a good one. The thing is, he had a good rookie year. He did have a good rookie year. He was and he was, a, 19... he was another guy who was a superstar in college. So I found out about, uh, yeah, he was kicked off the boss. of his team, his college team, because he was, uh, he was a steroid user. Yeah, he, he liked to get lot. doped up because he liked to get injured. And have you seen the guy? He looks like he... Yeah, he looks like he did. Right, exactly. He has the forehead of a mongoloid. Anywho... Brian Bosworth, he was kicked off his team. So he was part of the 1987 supplemental draft, which I just found out existed. That was pretty cool. It changed, like, eligible, or it gave people the ability to get drafted with eligibility issues. Yes. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and he went off and ruined that. <laughs> Had a 24 game career, um, injured, forced to retire. But he won two Butkus Awards in college. And he was, you know, he's in, like, I think 2015 inductee to the college football hall of fame he was very good in college yeah so one of those guys that just i don't want to say didn't pan out but partly due to his own choices and he's the his, one guy he was kind of a victim of his own he was such a big right. star in college he had such high expectations and then he couldn't couldn't fulfill like a lot of so that's yeah. not a bad pick brian bosworth uh what's your number three my number three is gonna be my wife's 
pick. I kind of did the same thing because she listens every week and she's like, you never asked me anything. Oh, she's going to listen to this. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is her pick. Yeah, to stop. Just get to the pick. <laughs> Let me put the shovel up as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, Steve Emptman, defensive end. He was the first pick in the 1992 draft. She really, uh, she really put it on me here. I'm a Colts fan. And um, is he the guy that like... He was a fourth in Heisman voting as a defensive lineman, which is rare. Um, he missed 30 games over five seasons due to yeah. injury. 1994, he refused a pay cut, and the Colts were like, well, yeah, I mean, we're not going to just continue to pay you this enormous salary because he had, like, the, one of the biggest rookie, or at least at the time, he had the biggest rookie contract, you know, ever or whatever, or one of them. Um, but, yeah, then he was cut. He went on to play start five total games for two different teams over the next two years nice and, five more than me right and then never played another snap in the nfl uh but yeah steve emptman colt's first pick in the 1992 draft kind of rough to uh essentially waste a pick it's a not, first overall pick at that yeah not a bad pick i didn't have him on my list but it's not a bad pick shout um, out maddie for looking that one up because i didn't know he existed but it pissed me off so my I'm going to go, my next two picks are both recent guys. Actually, both same draft. Picks back-to-back with each other. Ooh, I know who they are. So my next one is going to be the 2021 third overall pick, Trey Lance. Yep. I mean, he barely played at all for the 49ers. The 49ers, one of the things that that plays into him being such a um, high bust is the 49ers traded up to get him. They traded multiple first rounds to get him. See, that's that's one of the things I think goes – not goes into like why you are a bust, but it's one of the things it plays that into it. It definitely. plays into determining if you're a bust for sure. Like that you were sought after and you did nothing. He comes in, they let him, they gave him like a year or two to try to get his feet under him. He started, I think, a grand total of like four or five games, maybe a little more, but not not much more than that. Jimmy Garoppolo came in, took his place, led him to the Super Bowl. Then yeah, Jimmy just- Garoppolo got replaced, and then they traded him, and now he's a backup for the Cowboys, and he's forever. No offense to Trey Lance. Forever going to be a backup. Yeah, Third overall you, pick who's going to have a less than 10 games probably started in his whole career. Once you become – it's really strange. Unless you're like the rare Geno Smith, once you become a backup – That's you're, what you are. You're a backup in the NFL. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. So no, that's, that's a very good pick. Trey, Trey Lance, Lance is, and I think, as I said, as we both said, a lot of it plays into he was sought after, and they traded up to get him. They traded a lot to get him. Yeah, they looked for this And guy. honestly, what helped him the most – is that in that same draft, their last pick overall, I don't know if it's the same draft. There's a couple drafts after that. But the last, Brock Purdy oh, Mr. is Irrelevant. a reason yeah. that the 49ers don't get an, as much shit as they deserve for drafting Trey Lance third overall. Right, because they got lucky with the last pick in the draft. Exactly. So it's, it's just been completely overshadowed. But so yeah, what's your next pick? You said the next pick My in next the draft. pick is actually the pick right before this, the second overall in 2021. That's going to be Zach Wilson. I mean, this is a guy... Had so much hype behind so him. So much hype, and the Jets have given him so much opportunity. Not anymore. He's with the Then Broncos. he got another chance. Aaron Rodgers came in. They came. They said, okay, let's wait a couple years. You're going to get to learn behind the best. Aaron Rodgers gets hurt first drive of the season, and Zach Wilson shits the bed again. He had a couple good games, but it is I, really I crazy. think it's obvious at this point Zach Wilson's not an NFL starting quarterback. He's the Trey Lance. He's the backup. He's, yeah, he's a backup the, NFL quarterback. He is the Johnny Manziel. He can come like, and give you a couple good games. Oh, that's mean because he's not on drugs. He's not on drugs. But I take it back. Jack. Trey Lance, second overall. A lot of it plays into just – I mean Trey Lance. Uh, Zach Wilson, second overall. A lot of it plays into where you drafted, the team you drafted. You're in New York. And and you got to – I mean, you There's a lot do. of media, and you just – he hasn't been able to live up to expectations So Zach Wilson. My fourth pick in biggest drafts, biggest so, busts. So we talk about, you know, like being sought after. I got my fourth pick. We talk about being sought after and people like, you know, wanted wanted you, right? We the did. The Saints in 1979. Are you taking the punter? I'm taking the punter. <laughs> the Saints in 1979. That's not his fault. Well, th- this is confirms the bust, though. Russell Erkselbin... I hope I said his name right. He was the 11th overall pick. He's still the highest drafted punter ever. He was supposed to be the punter. Not even a kicker. He was supposed to be the punter and the kicker, but he couldn't get the kicking job because he wasn't good enough. Um, 
Kellen Wins- Winslow was drafted two picks after him. He had a Hall of Fame career. Yeah, Hall of Fame tight end. Um, he only played – Russell Erksobin only played five seasons, and like I said, he continues to still be the highest drafted punter ever. He – I would say he was definitely a big part because they couldn't, you know, rely on that. They used a bunch of money to get him and everything and a big pick. Started the bag over the head decade. That's what the internet said. Yeah. He helped. He's part of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Russell Erksobin, punter, 11th pick in the 1979 draft. Uh, that's my fourth pick. And then fifth pick, I'm going to go with, let's see. I'm going to go with Josh Rosen. I had him on my list. Similar to the Trey Lance. Um, you know, he was a 10th overall pick in the 2018 draft. Essentially a wasted pick because the, the very next year, next year they, they, Kyler they drafted first overall Kyler Murray and decided to keep him. And he had the infamous quote where he's like, those nine teams ahead of us, they're going to like rue the day they didn't draft me. Right. And I was like, no, they're not. They're not. He was cocky in college the whole time. Um, he's only had 13 starts in the NFL through four or five teams now. I think he's one of. I think he had the infamous uh, four interception first half with the Bills that one time a couple years ago. Just he hasn't been able to put it together. Like we said, a clear not um, not a starting NFL quarterback. He'll be a backup until he retires. But yeah, only thirteen shaky starts for Josh Rosen. Yeah, it's not a bad pick. I had him on my list. Uh, so my last pick is going to be your favorite team. Uh, not only did they make the mistake of drafting a running back high overall, yeah. they drafted a guy that turned out to be one of the biggest biggest busts. Bust, which is weird for a running back because usually you think, oh, if you can run well in college, you can at least you know be semi-successful in the NFL. You know, he can – I'm going to let you say the pick first, sorry. Trent Richardson, third overall. Uh, not only, as I said, is it high. An Alabama running back. running back at that. He was a Heisman Trophy winning Alabama running back. Had one of the <laughs> – some crazy highlights in college, and then comes to the NFL and he can't find a hole. Yeah, he, wide open holes, and he's running to the back of his lineman consistently. I, I just don't understand it. But yeah, Trent Richardson. I mean, three point three. He coming out like they were. We everybody thought he was a legitimate superstar. Now, did we? The Browns drafted him, but we traded for him, right? Other I way think, around. I thought I thought the Browns drafted him, and then we traded for him in his second year. Thought it was the other way around. But either, either way, way, he was a bust. Three and a half, three point three yards per carry for his career. Very bad. He, uh, I mean, like the second worst ever, with like five hundred plus touches, is what the, the the Google told me today. Which is that's atrocious. Yeah, it was just tough for him, and I've just never seen a drop off I've from seen the running quote, back position that well. I've seen that a much. quote that that said that for whatever reason, and this was like in college, oh, an Alabama coach said that Trent Richardson couldn't find a hole they don't know why but like without like the stringent like how alabama does things kind of like the cowboys where it's like they tell you the schedule they they basically hold your hand through practice if if he didn't have that he couldn't perform and it kind of showed yeah it ended up biting him in the ass so let's recap my top five draft busts i got number one jamarcus russell two johnny manziel three trey lance four zach wilson five trent richardson solid draft solid draft i got number one ryan leaf Two, Brian Bosworth. Three, Steve Impman. Four, Russell Erkselbin. And five, Josh Rosen. All right. Let's recap week 10 of Stakes and Takes. Let's recap. I don't want to do it. I went four and three for our takes that we brought in. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, how'd you do? I did pretty good this week, Alex. I went 7-0. and I got every pick right. All my soccer picks. Can we just do soccer every week? Uh, it's not good for views, unfortunately. No, Classico. It helped. It helped. Uh, how about stakes? I went 3-2 and two, uh, plus, like, 0.3 units. I went 5-0 uh, and oh in stakes. I, did, oh, I got every single one right. Damn it, boy. All right, let's break them down. What'd you get right? Uh, we we started with stakes. We started with takes. Takes. I got. Well, we know you got all of the the the, the takes right. So let's just so go. I'm to the just going to run through it real quick. I got yeah. Besiktas right. I got Arsenal right. I got Grionia right. I got Real Madrid right. I got Manchester United right. I got Paris Saint Germain right, and I got LA Galaxy right. Okay, that's not bad. 
Well, that's actually very good, I guess, is the actual terminology for that. Uh, four and three for me. I got the Golden Knights wrong. I got the Dynamo wrong. I got... Yeah, you picked the Golden Knights after they clinched the playoffs on the last day of the regular season. They weren't very motivated. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I also got the Astros wrong in beating the Nationals. Yeah, I would never bet on the Astros this year. Yeah, they'll win some games. Uh, but I did get Enter miami winning. I did get uh, the Braves winning, the Cubs winning. I got... What was the last game? Another... Ba- oh, um... The other baseball, whatever it was. I yeah, got one it, of right? those other 27 teams. One of those other 27 teams. But, yeah, on the uh, on the stakes side of things, where I put my money where my mouth was, I went 3-2. and two. Uh, Lost the Golden Knights, lost the Dynamo money line. But I rebounded well with the messy anytime goal. That was a good— uh, He scored twice, good... which if I had thought of that, that would have been even better. But I'm happy. I'm humble. Uh, got the Braves money line and the Cubs money line. Brought me to a solid point three up units for the week 5.24 plus units on the season and don't worry brother i got your math so you can rattle off whatever you want to say yeah so i got in my bets obviously five and oh two units arsenal money line win one unit manchester united money line win one unit la galaxy money line win one unit bashik this money line win and my big one it was a last minute winner five units real madrid over barcelona win that's good. That's very good. Oh, my other win was the uh, Calgary Flame. Calgary Flames. Yeah. Boo-hoo. So, yeah, good job. You went um, plus 6.16 units up on the week, bringing you finally positive to uh, plus 3.19 units on the— Yes, yeah, so that just cancels out the minus, the 0 and 5 I had at the beginning of the season. Pretty much brings us to this. Uh, you're at 64, 34, and 2. 29 and 16, uh, plus 3.19, so that's pretty solid. Plus 5.24 for me, 63, 35, and 2, 27, 17, and 2. So you're winning in all categories at the moment. Except for units. Oh, yeah, units, I got you. But, I mean, I don't feel happy about all of it. But, yeah, um, let's jump into the, uh, the picks we're bringing this week. We already recapped the UFC we all already obviously doing the six main card fights there. What you got for picks? Are you doing all soccer again? I got four soccer picks, two on uh, Saturday, two on Sunday. All right, let me just lay them all on me, and then, then I'll give you all mine, and then we can talk stakes after that. Okay, let's start Saturday. I got Everton hosting Brentford. Uh, this is in the Premier League. Everton 16th. Brentford 15th in the Premier League. Everton's only 16th, though, because of a point deduction, so they're really better than that. Last time these two teams played were in September, 3-1 Everton. I got Everton at home beating Brentford, so that's my first pick. Next one, we go to France. Uh, PSG, first place in uh, Ligue 1, uh, taking on Le Havre. For the people that don't speak that language, that means Ligue 1. Taking on the 16th place team, Le Havre. Uh, They played earlier in the year. It was 2-0 PSG. PSG's one Three in a row at this point. Two in a row, maybe. Uh, I got PSG winning that easily. Then cool. we go to Sunday. Cool, we, cool. Fair, fair. We first go to Scotland. First Scottish game I've covered this year. We got the fifth place, St. Mirian. Are you uh, sure that's the first Scottish game you covered this year? I believe so. Taking on second place, Rangers. Rangers, one of the two giant clubs in Scotland. They've actually played three times already this season. Rangers won 1-0. They won 2-0, and they won 3-0. I got Rangers winning 2-0. Specifically? No, I just got Rangers okay. winning, but I think it's going to be around 2-0. Then we go to the biggest matchup of the weekend. It's the North London Derby. Uh, it's Arsenal. First place currently in the Premier League, taking on their arch rival, the fifth place Tottenham Hotspur. They played earlier this season. It was a 2-2 draw, but it was all the way in September. Uh, Arsenal is kind of getting things back on track. Tottenham lost their last game. I got Arsenal with the win. Nice. That wraps up your four, right? Those are my four picks. All right, cool. So I'm going to do kind of a mix-up like I always do. I got two NBA playoff games and two MLB regular season games. Uh, First, I have the playoffs. West, first round, game three, Thunder versus the Pelicans. So we have money line on the Pelicans, minus 115, over under 209 and a half. It's 2-0 currently, uh, Thunder. 2-0 Thunder on the season. Zion's out. On the Pel- series. On the series, sorry, yeah. Uh, Z- 
Pelicans lost 94 to 92 on Sunday and 124 to 92 on Wednesday. I Shy think Gillis Alexander and he had Chet a career Holmgren high off. He had a career high game last uh, on Wednesday, like th- 33 points or 34 points, something like that. I picked the Thunder going to win. I think the Thunder going to win, so I picked them to win. That's number one. Two, East first round game three. I got the Celtics versus the Heat. Celtics beat Heat? the Heat 114 to 94, but the Heat beat them on Wednesday. One game two in Boston. 111 to 101. I think the Celtics are trying to make a statement. They didn't obviously do that last night, or you know, uh, what was last night actually? You're, I am right. Um, but I think the Celtics are going to win Game Three. Moving the on, the best to, record in the NBA by far this year. Moving on to Major League Baseball, I got MLB for those that don't know. Oh, there you go for the English speaking people. Uh, I got the Athletics at the Orioles on Friday. A's versus O's. A's versus O's on Friday. It's the alphabet soup of the week. Uh, athletics are nine and sixteen on the season. Oreos, Orioles, the Oreos are sixteen and eight. I could use some Oreos right now. I do have some. Um, athletics are only scoring two point eight runs per game so far this season. So I think the Orioles at home are going to capitalize. So picking the Orioles there, and then the Guardians at the Braves. The Guardians are eighteen and seven. The Braves are seventeen and six. It's going to be a good matchup. Braves at home. Uh, Chris Sales, 2-1 and one with 27 strikeouts. He's going to be pitching on Friday as well. That's the game I'm choosing. Uh, the Braves have the first or first in batting average for ranking at 283 and first in on-base percentage. I think the Braves are going to win the Friday game specifically. It's a good pick. I always like when you pick the Braves. Yeah, I did jump to their bandwagon late last season, and now I am just holding strong. No more Yankees for me. All right, what you got for stakes, my boy? Uh, so I got two MLB. I mean, MLB. You got me on MLB brain. Good, I got I two should. MMA and uh, three soccer. All right, I have three MMA and two other. So I'll give you my two MMA. You give me your MMA. Let's do it. I got one unit, uh, Nicolau Moneyline minus 185. Okay. And then I got two units, uh, Kareem Silva Moneyline minus 155. Nice, nice. Uh, I got Medich, money line, m- minus 340, two units. Onama, money line, plus 135, two units. Bogdan Guskov, money line, plus 160, two units. And that's the three, because that's one, two, three. Okay, I'll give you my three soccer then. I, I got brother. one unit Everton, money line, plus 140. I got two unit Rangers, money line, minus 255. And I'm putting a whopping four units arsenal minus 115. Good luck to you there, sir. That'd be crazy if you go 5-0 and two weeks in a row. Um, at this point, Christian has been on a pretty good hot streak lately, especially with the picks you're bringing to the table. So anybody who wants to follow those, pay attention. Check out the website. You'll see his picks by tomorrow. Um, I'll give you your loser picks real quick. God damn, that sucked. Thank you for that. Um, and my other two picks are going to be the Thunder money line beating the Pelicans. I got three units on that one. And the Braves money line minus two, 210. I got one unit on that. Okay. I'm, I like it when you pick the Braves, as I said earlier. Hey, let's do, since we have the draft, we have a few picks out. Just since we're already wrapping everything up, let's just throw out the, uh, the draft picks that they've already done. So far tonight. Well, J.J. McCarthy just got picked 10th overall by the Vikings. They traded up to get him. They did trade up. Michael Penix, 8th overall. Uh, obviously, Caleb Williams, 1st. Jaden Daniels, 2nd. Drake there May, 3rd. There you go. Marvin Harrison Jr., 4th. I think Joe Alt, 5th. Joe Alt, 5th. 6th. LSU. Oh, Malik Neighbors, 6th. 7th was the center from Alabama. The offensive tackle, J.C. Latham. Yeah, and then 8th was Penix. Ninth, Ninth was Odunze. Odunze, Romo to, back to the Bears. And then 10th was just now J.J. McCarthy. And then the Jets are picking currently at 11th. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting draft, an exciting week. Football's back. Football is semi-back. Well, yeah. We have the schedule releasing soon. May, yes. We'll be talking about everything coming up. The season's in full swing for stakes and takes. 
I think that pretty much wraps everything up, right? I think it does. I think that wraps up episode 42. So check us out next week. We're going to recap uh, UFC Vegas 91. We're going to recap the picks we just gave you, the bets we just gave you, give you some new ones. And we're also going to look ahead to the next UFC pay-per-view, UFC 301 in Brazil. Who's fighting there? Pantoja. E. Craig? Ursaig. Ursaig. Yeah, Pantoja Ursaig. Nobody even knows who that is, but Pantoja, everybody knows Ursaig, look, I think Ursaig, I think he's going to stand a chance in that fight. He's a good, strong wrestler with solid strength. Hold striking. that thought and let's talk about it next week, Alex. Ooh, yeah, let's not break it. All right, thank you, guys. Love you. Bye. Bye.